years old, he possibly will be the best point guard in this league because he can do anything. He can score. He can go to the rim. He's the best finisher in our game already. and He's not even 28 years old yet. He just got out the draft in 2011, round one, the first round pick. So that's, that being said, I'm going to start off with that. Kyrie Irving was the reason why the Cleveland Cavaliers lost the series. You could talk about the role players. Yes, the role players was horrible. The bench was just horrible. Chandler Fry had a total of two points this whole NBA final, so that was horrible at that. Richard Jefferson, I was not the same. All the bench players regressed from last year because they are getting old. Iman Sumper, they, they need to dump them off. They need to put J.R. Smith on the bench and find a true shooting guard. But Kyrie Irving was the main, not the main problem, but he was one of the problems. Um, last year, we seen Kyrie Irving was uh, LeBron James' um, good secondhand man. We seen him take the load off LeBron James. We seen him be LeBron James' Robin, uh, and he's the Batman. I always say that because Kyrie Irving played a perfect Robin last year. But in this year, game one, he had 24 points, 10 for 22. Game two, 19 points, 8 for 23. So he didn't show up. He only showed up in two games, and that was only in game three and game four and game three. He really didn't show up, really, because they lost that game. Because you can't say that um, the last two, the last two or one minute, Kyrie Irving was a no show, and usually he's he's a great show, and he mm-hmm. made that bad shot with Clay Thompson. We can be still on the show live right now talking about Game Seven on Sunday, but instead, Kyrie Irving with a bad step back three. He was 0 for seven, and he tried a step back three, and that's something that you have to question about Kyrie Irving. He's usually a great um, decision maker late in those games, and he should have just drove to the rim. And part of that was LeBron James being who LeBron James is in the last minute. He just takes the back seat and let somebody else take the shot, and he needs to change that about his game because Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant wasn't like that. They had killer instincts, and they don't care whoever open is going to take the last shot. Except for you have a Steve Kerr on your team like Michael Jordan did or Robert Horry like Kobe Bryant did, but they made those shots. Other than that, Kyrie Irving only stepped up in two games. In one game, he stepped up. He had 40 points in 15 for 27. But in game one, game two, and game five, um, Kyrie Irving didn't show up. And that's the reason why the Cavaliers lost. Let him have a game three and game four in every game, or at least 30-plus points in every game, then it would have been a different situation. But he did in game five, 26 points, now for 22. And not just the points. Kyrie Irving needs to get his assist totals up. Um, you know, I've seen two, three, or four. He needs to be around that seven range every game. So that was one of the reasons why it's Kyrie Irving and a little bit of the role players. Yeah, definitely. The role players, to me, was the biggest thing. You cannot get outscored in bench points in bench play, period, and win an NBA championship. That's my opinion. You cannot do that. And they got flat out, like I said earlier, outscored, outplayed, and it's this Shumpert thing is done and over with. I'm tired of people saying Shumpert adds something. He adds nothing. I'm sorry. He doesn't add he anything. Does. You got J.R. Smith, who's the streakiest shooter in probably NBA history. The guy had like three games with averaging, what, four points, eight points or something, then, put, then shoots lights out in one game. So... You, and you gotta you gotta move on from James Jones, Deontay Jones. You gotta move on from these cats. You need young players that can come off the bench and and ball for your team. That's what you need, and that's what they did not have. Um, Big L says he sometimes great, sometimes helps the team, but never every game. Uh, I think he's talking about Kyrie there, which I agree. Um, also, Kyrie is a shoot first guard. Yes. Well said, Big O. He is. He's not a true point guard. Let's 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 get it straight. Let's put it out there. Let's be real about it. He's a two guard that plays a point guard position, and that's what it is at the end of the day. And and that's why I believe that the Cavaliers should just um, do a combo guard sit a combo guard backcourt like we seen the Phoenix Suns did when Jeff Hornacek was coaching the Phoenix Suns. If Nobody don't know Jeff Hornacek. He's the coach with the New York Knicks right now. And what Jeff Hornacek did was he had Isaiah Thomas playing a point guard and Goran Dragic playing a two. Or he had Eric Bledsoe in the game and Isaiah Thomas playing a one. So I believe that's what the Cleveland Cavaliers need to go. Put J.R. Smith and um, sign a true point guard. If they had enough cap space, Chris Paul, 
at the one and Kyrie at the two would be perfect. Or Kyle Lowry at the one, Kyrie Irving at the two, even though I don't like Kyrie Irving. But, you know, some players change when they have a great leader on the team. And LeBron James can turn Kyrie Ir- Ky- Kyle Lowry to the best point guard in the East. And I, and I believe that, and I will say that. You can quote me on that. If Kyle Lowry goes to the Cavaliers, LeBron James will make Kyle Lowry the best point guard. But other than that, um, I, I believe in Kyrie Irving. I know he's a um, shoot first type of point guard, but that's what comes with going to the game. That's why I said that people cannot make these overstate comments over Kyrie Irving because he's still young. He's not even 28 yet. So we have to give Kyrie Irving some time to learn with that. And another thing before we go away from the NBA Finals, this tour is the Cavaliers fans. When they say the Warriors was has too much firepower or they cheating. Hear me out on this, Ben. The Cleveland Cavaliers said, I always say Kyrie Irving better than Stephen Curry. Draymond Tristan Thompson better than Zaza Pachulia. Kevin Love better than um, Draymond Green. LeBron James better than KD. And the Cavaliers bench better than the Warriors. So why didn't the Cavaliers win? If you have four out of your five players in the starting lineup is better than them on one-on-one type wise and your bench is better than the Warriors bench as they say why didn't the Cavaliers beat the Golden State Warriors and that's the main reason why I don't want to hear um, the Warriors cheated or had a super team they really don't because the Cavaliers one for one your your fans saying that you're better than them so it shouldn't be a 4-1 series if that and to me I don't think the Golden State Warriors cheated because all of their players were drafted they only signed one other player which was Kevin Durant which was phenomenal he was the masterpiece that's what I have to say before we get yeah. away from the NBA Finals talk. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you, you're you dead on with what you're saying. Everybody going into this series, and everybody was saying, I, and I said this, let me back up. I said on paper, if you write down the names of the Warriors paper players, and you write down the names of the Cavs players, there's clearly an, an upside, a complete difference in those players and people didn't agree people didn't think it was right or whatever but we clearly seen like you said Tristan Thompson did not win his matchup obviously uh, LeBron did none of them I mean none of them won their matchups <laughs> I mean plain and simple none of them won their matchups so Cavs fans you better hope LeBron GM owner whatever else that he is he's gonna find somebody <laughs> to come in and do something and that's the moral of the story that's the reason why this finals didn't work out the Cavs were overconfident that's really what it is they were overconfident they thought and LeBron here's the thing right here listen to this LeBron was the only one that knew they weren't gonna win let's go back let's rewind back he kept saying he needed help they added an old Deron Williams. They added Andrew Bogut, who didn't even play. He was the only one that knew they were gonna win. They were gonna lose. He was the only one. Everybody yeah. else was too overconfident. The GM, everybody was overconfident, overpaying people, overpaying Tristan Thompson, overpaying Shumpert, overpaying J.R. Smith. So that that's it right there. Yeah, they just overpaid Tristan Thompson. My like, God. Damn, like, really? <laughs> yeah. $84 million? And yeah. just to grab reef and don't, don't, not, don't get me wrong, Tristan Thompson is a great player and he's a great asset to the team for those second chance points, no third chance points, but $84 million, I believe, or $82 million, well, what is going on? What yeah. is going on? He's, he's, I don't know. Yeah. Cavaliers need to do something different. If they don't, then. It, it will be another team in the East if they keep playing around with the Golden State Warriors. It will be another team in the East that will um, put them out. LeBron James know that. And I think the Celtics is the next team. The Bucks is the next team in three years, three to four years. Milwaukee Bucks will have Anthony Tacumpo as the top three player in the league. And I say in four years or three years, this man is just amazing. And then they have Jabari Parker, so... The Bucks will be coming along in three to four years. If LeBron James still on the Cavaliers team, I can see the Milwaukee Bucks putting them out. And I know I sound crazy, but you just have to you just have to stay tuned to the Milwaukee Bucks and what they're doing. Yeah. 
All right, man. We well, appreciate you, Jonathan Bates. Appreciate you so much for coming on the show. Once again, you can find Jonathan Bates. I had all your information down, so let me make sure I get this right. Jonathan Bates, he's a writer for Amco Hoops Net, also Spark Sports. He writes basketball for that. Also, you can follow him on Twitter, Jonathan J. Bates. And great having you on, man, as always. Appreciate you. Thank you. Appreciate you uh, even more for just letting me have me on. I always on a lot of people's shows, but this one by far I love the most. Man, appreciate that. I'm going to give you a round of applause. <laughs> I'm going to give you some cheers for that one. Appreciate you, man. <laughs> no, no, for real, Ben. This is not scripted or anything. This, your show is possible. I don't see why it's not at least on TV or at least top 10 on iTunes podcast. But this is a great, great live show, and it's not scripted or anything like that. Yes. Man, appreciate that. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you so much. All right, yep. have a good one. All right, so that was Jonathan Bates. I appreciate his comments. That that really, because I work, I work hard on this on this show. Um, I put time in. I do research. This is not something that I just put together on the fly. And uh, I appreciate that comment from him. Uh, it was very very uh, inspiring what he said. All right, so next up. We're going to have X-Squad's very own Vince Wright going to be calling into the show, talking Ward versus Kovalev, and he'll be calling in here in just a moment. So we're going to take a quick break, and then right after that, we will get Vince on the line. looking for an honest car guy somebody that's gonna shoot it straight give you the honest answers and give you the best deal on the car of your dreams check out sean nantanetti internet sales manager at jerry durant toyota texas call or text him at 817-231-3696 or visit his website at goshanauto.com. He'll give you a great deal on the car of your dreams. Even if you're not in Texas, he can still give you a deal on a car. Check him out right now. Sean Nantanetti, goshanauto.com. All right, welcome back, folks, to the BS3 Sports Show. And we will have Vince Wright in a couple of seconds. We're going to talk Ward versus Kovalev. Also gets his thoughts on some other things. But this is a big fight coming up. This is a big one. This is part two of this fight. I'm a Ward fan. I'm an Andre Ward fan. And I think this is going to be a, a winning fight for him. The great, the one and only sports governor of Minnesota, Vince Wright. How's it going? Hey, how you doing, Dan? Doing good, man. Doing really good. Appreciate you for calling in. Vince Wright just got a new car. Uh, so- <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the price is right. You just got a new car. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Much needed. Uh, yeah, so I'll... Uh- Wife took care of everything, and uh, yeah, got the got a new Ford Explorer, man. So uh, feeling good on a on a actually a very nice uh, Saturday weather wise here up in uh, Minnesota. Great, man. I'm happy for you. I seen the post, so I definitely had to mention that on the show. Hopefully, you don't mind. But, oh uh, no, no, no problem. Cool, cool. All right, so Ward versus Kovalev Part Two. Um, we oh, all yeah. know what happened in the first one. Unanimous decision. 
and this is what I love about this particular fight. These two guys do not.